adventure and opportunity. With picturesque towns, large expanses of wilderness, and everything in between, it's a state that is just waiting to be explored. As we meet the people and communities that make up this great granite state, we'll uncover what truly makes it unique. Hi everyone, I'm your host, Kate Sullivan, and this is New Hampshire Life. You're gonna love it here. New Hampshire Life is presented by Visit New Hampshire. Hi everyone, we're here on Main Street in Newmarket, New Hampshire, and on today's episode, first we head down to the water in the Great Bay area and learn about oyster restorations, and hopefully get a chance to try some local oysters. Then we head back to town and check out some businesses, learn about real estate development, and close out the night at a Newmarket staple, the Stone Church. But first, we need a new car on New Hampshire Life, something that handles all the elements in all four seasons. So we're headed up to Gorham, New Hampshire to meet with Berlin City Auto Group to get a new car. Hi, my name is Jaeger Melanowski with Berlin City Auto Group. I'm here in Gorham, New Hampshire, and I'm super excited to introduce Chad Crane, who is our general manager of this entire complex of dealerships that have been delivering vehicles for over 40 years. We've been delivering cars uh, throughout New England, and it's really exciting because we show up, we have everything all set for them. They walk outside and they have their new car and they don't even leave. I think we really need to pick you out a really awesome ride for this season. Maybe an SUV that you can I go think, places? Yeah, so we can fill the car up and go on our adventures and be comfortable at yeah, the same time. What yeah. are you thinking? Uh, I think I got the perfect vehicle for you. Oh my goodness. Wow, Is look at that. Is this it? This is it. Is this the New Hampshire Life car? This is a New Hampshire this Life car. This is a sweet ride. We are going to have so much fun in this car. I can't wait. Well, we are now officially ready for season one of New Hampshire Life. Thank you so much for this Jeep Grand Cherokee. It is beautiful and it's perfect for all of our adventures ahead. We'll see you on the road this season. Alex LaFerrier, I'm the Marine Director for the Nature Conservancy in New Hampshire, and I am standing on the Great Bay um, at the University of New Hampshire's Jackson Estuarine Laboratory. So about 70% of all commercial fisheries species spend part of their life cycle in an estuary, and so this estuary is a really, it's a powerhouse, it's a nursery, and if we can provide clean water and really good habitat, that's going to help our commercial fisheries in the Gulf of Maine. To do oyster restoration, it really takes a community. So this is a collaborative effort through the Nature Conservancy and the University of New Hampshire. So we're the primary investigators or scientists. And then we also work super closely with our oyster aquaculture growers. Um, so they help us raise oysters. We also buy oysters from the growers and deploy them on the reef. And then we also have a really cool program working with volunteers to help us raise oysters. And so it's a, it's a large community of people. We probably have over 200 volunteers that participate in oyster restoration. So all of our volunteers, they typically have property on the water. However, we also work with a couple different businesses that participate in the program. We work with a few schools that have cages that then their students can interact with those oysters, learn more about the estuary, all the different animals that use the oysters. And then also, in previous years, we have had a community science oyster garden that was a partnership with the town of Durham. So anybody could go to the Durham Town Landing and have the opportunity to look at these baby oysters, interact with them, collect data. And it's a really great learning opportunity and also um, a really great community engagement part of this program. My name is Laura Brown. I'm the owner of Fox Point Oysters in Little Bay, New Hampshire. Uh, I started working with the Nature Conservancy, I think about two years ago, and we started with raising some spat on shell, which is baby oysters that are attached to shell. Since we normally raise oysters for um, our own sales, it sort of made sense to work together, and we were able to help raise the oysters that they were putting out in their restoration sites. 
this has been a pretty new business here in New Hampshire lately, so when you get a New Hampshire oyster, it's kind of a rarity. Nobody's really selling them across the country, so when you get a New Hampshire oyster, it's a local oyster, it's a real local food source, and I think that's really rare in our country to find something that's just local, you can only get here. And it has a specific flavor profile from where it's grown, so you are getting a taste of this bay when you get a New Hampshire oyster. I absolutely love that New Hampshire has um, a little bit of everything. I've lived across the country in all different places, but this has the bay, which is amazing. I mean, look at it. It has the ocean nearby, the mountains, the lakes. You can't beat it. Thank you, ladies, for all the work that you're doing. Now we're going to head over to New Market, check out the Main Street. Bye. How you doing? I'm John Wells, uh, the owner of the Big Bean Cafe in downtown Newmarket. A lot of historic in Newmarket, a lot of new blood and a lot of growth. Um, a lot of people are moving to the area, coming from you know, more populated areas, looking for something that they can really be a part of where they're not just lost in the mix. Um, we see a lot of you know, familiar faces every day. Um, there's a lot of people who you know, network with each other in town and are big parts of growing this town and this community. So it's really cool to be part of. The menu is actually pretty unique. Uh, the menu is made up of specials over the past 23 years. Uh, some of the items on our menu were the original items on the menu with the, uh, the first owner had it, Mike Welch. Uh, the Hippie and the Downey's French Toast are two of them that were dishes that he came up with. Uh, some of the dishes are dishes the previous owners or management or even uh, the cooks and the servers have come up with. Um, everybody kind of you know, eats lunch together at the end of the day or breakfast together at the beginning of the morning. They come up with different ideas, just, hey, this would be cool, what if we did this? Um, our 17-year-old daughter comes up with some great stuff too. So it's a collaboration of a lot of different people, not just one chef, which is why you have the menu you have today. Very unique and just all over across the board. So we're sitting down to have a bite. I'm with my friend Brad, and you know this area in Newmarket pretty well, yeah? I do. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, we do. We have a branch just about 50 yards down the road from here, and a lot of our employees come over here to grab something for breakfast, um, and I've been here before. It's been really great. What do you recommend on the menu? Everything is good. Uh, it's all locally sourced, so uh, I happen to like the ghost rat burrito, so we can Ooh. maybe try that, uh, but anything you pick on the menu is going to be terrific, including I think the they coffee. Have yeah, the yeah. coffee, avocado. Toast. Yep. So how long have you been in the New Market area? We've been here for about four years now. Um, so we had an opportunity to move in um, when another institution chose to move out. Um, we thought it, it, it fits our business model perfectly. Yeah. We love being uh, sort of a cornerstone in the downtown areas. Um, so obviously we're that. You saw that today. And um, the opportunity to support small businesses like this in particular, that's really what we're all about. So it was yeah. a perfect fit for us. This this coffee shop is a great location. It's a great spot. It's adorable. And, yep. you know, my theory is great main streets have great coffee shops and great banks. I agree. <laughs> I would agree. Those are probably the two most essential elements. I, I think, think so. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Wow. Here we have our Smurf at Benedict. Right. That's amazing. That's really and we have our Eleanor Rosso yes. avocado toast with sunny side egg. Wow. Right. Thank you. And then Sarah has our Ridgemont quesadilla with our side seasonal in our Northern Spy grilled cheese sandwich. Wow, nice. these look, I could eat all of this. <laughs> Do you want that? Because really I want hungry. all yours too. <laughs> I want mine. <laughs> all right, guys, we'll enjoy it. Thanks for coming in. Thank right. you so much. Thanks. Before we dig in, I just want to thank Brad and John for his great experience here at the Big Bean. So what's next for us today? We are walking just across the street to the New Market Mills and we're going to meet our friend Eric Chinberg for a tour. I can't wait and I can't wait to try this. Hey, thanks for coming down, checking us out here in Newmarket at the Big Bean. Uh, be sure to check us out here in Newmarket or at our location in Durham. We'd love to see you. Peace and love. Hi everyone, I'm Brad Page, President and CEO of Kenny Bunk Savings Bank. And I'm Jill Gravink, Executive Director of Northeast Passage. Kenny Bunk Savings has been a longtime supporter of Northeast Passage. We're deep believers in their mission. Thanks, Brad. And we're extremely grateful for their support. 
Northeast Passage is a service program of the University of New Hampshire. And what we try to do is harness the power of sport and recreation and make it available for people who have disabilities. With the, our adapted sports programs really span the whole range. We have competitive and recreational, so we can deal with the aspiring Paralympic athlete as well as the weekend warrior. On our competitive side, what we try to do is make a team sport available for anyone with a physical disability. So we have power wheelchair soccer, we have wheelchair rugby, we're starting a wheelchair lacrosse program, and we have a sled hockey program that currently is number one in the country. We're pretty excited about that. On the recreational side of, of our world, what we do is, you name it, anything that's really popular in New Hampshire, we're trying to make it happen. So we've added pickleball because it's a fast growing sport and now we have wheelchair pickleball. We do kayaking, we do water skiing, golf, um, you name it, we're, we're out there doing it and making it open and available to people with disabilities. At Northeast Passage, our adaptive sports programs rely on philanthropic support like that given to us by Kenny Bunk Savings Bank. And Kenny Bunk Savings is proud to support Northeast Passage and their mission. And I would encourage everyone to take a closer look at Northeast Passage. You can check us out at nepassage.org. but notice the newly renovated mills here on Main Street in Newmarket. These mills used to be buzzing with textile businesses. New life has come to these mills and this new life has woven together the past and the present to revitalize the fabric of the community. So I am so happy that you brought me here, Brad. Thank you so much. You are so welcome and I agree with everything that you said. Eric Chinberg has done a great job on these mills and a lot of other mills in New England. He's created a residential vibe and an energy yeah. and a commercial vibe too. So I can't wait to show it to you. Let's go inside and see Eric. I can't wait. Thanks, let's go. The new market mills had been empty for 20 to 30 years prior to us working with the town to revitalize them beginning in about 2008 or 9. We worked with New Market hand in hand. We converted into 120 apartments and about 50,000 square feet of commercial space um, and we were occupied by uh, late 2010 I think. We have a wide variety of commercial tenants in the building from restaurants, dance studios, massage therapists, uh, yoga studios, um, a bicycle manufacturer, a manufacturer of uh, handbags. So you can come get an ice cream, you can come while your kids at the dance class or get a massage and then get a cocktail. It's a, it's a good group. Uh, yeah, this is not our first project. Uh, we've done about 17 of these um, mill re revitalizations throughout Massachusetts, New Hampshire and Maine. Uh, it's something that I really love doing. It, often it's quite part of a transformation of a town. Uh, it's a real joy to bring back like these fallow buildings and help a downtown uh, revitalize itself. Yeah, in all of our projects, we find things in the mills that we incorporate into the layout, into the decoration, into the function. Uh, in this building, we've preserved the point of the round penstock where the water channeled through, which we can see on the tour. And uh, we always try to find things that we can keep and save. That penstock was pretty cool. It is cool, isn't it? And yeah. it's right adjacent to the common room. We call it the club room for our tenants. Um, just a nice place to come hang out. Yeah, it's very comfortable and, and homey, which is you yeah. know, what you kind of want in a common area of a residential building. To make apartments affordable, we're making them smaller and smaller. And so we have this phrase, living large in small places. And we try to create things like this that they, our tenants can come and enjoy with larger groups because some of the studios are quite small. This is another cool feature. These are old fire doors. And the way these worked was they were held with a, a cable and the cable had a mercury link that if there was a fire, the mercury would melt, the cable would break and the door would slide shut. So we <laughs> keep these whenever we can. That's so cool. Yeah. There's a bunch of them in apartments because um, they were joining different rooms where they needed fire doors. So it's kind of just another fun. Feature. Wow, so this must be very heavy. It's very heavy. Yeah, okay. Yep. It's solid wood clad with metal. Yeah, okay. And, uh, and this is what everybody's going for now, by the way, in right. like this rustic <laughs> look, but this actually was here. Yeah. <laughs> if you'd like, we can go take a look at the waterfront. Yeah, let's go. And 
So here we are just outside the club room um, with an outdoor amenity for our tenants. We've got, everybody can have a boat, a kayak, a grill, a seat. Uh, this is a dream. It's pretty fun. And yeah. it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful out here. This is a big, this is a huge part of the reason the bank actually came to Newmarket. Um, Eric, Eric and the project that he was working on and bringing the vitality, uh, more vitality into the town. So huge part of the reason Kenny Wong Savings is in Newmarket. Well, that's a little bit circular because it wouldn't have happened if you guys didn't lend me the money in 2009. <laughs> So I'd say we can scratch, <laughs> thank each other. Yeah. Mutually beneficial. Hi, I'm Mike Vail, president of Hannaford Supermarkets. The customers really appreciate all the work that our, that our associates do to present the stores well and to provide great service and uh, provide a great atmosphere. Uh, it's a very complex business and we do it well because of the associates that we have and the talent that we recruit and hire and train. For us and for those of us that are in this business and, and make it a career, we're very, very passionate about it and very proud of the brand that we represent for our customers and our communities. Hi everyone, I'm Brad Page, President and CEO of Kenny Bunk Savings Bank. We talk about being purpose-driven, so we really want to make sure that our entire communities thrive. So while we always take care of our customers, it's really important to us that the health and well-being of the communities in which we're located is strong. We do that through a number of different ways, through our volunteering, but we also give 10% of our net profits back. In short, we're here to help. How can we help you? And thanks for watching New Hampshire Life. This could be the moment we've been waiting for The chance to feel alive And I raise my hand to the sky What a feeling Time to feel it This is where it all begins oh, 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 oh. This is where it all begins Well, I've worked up quite an appetite getting a tour throughout this day, so I'm looking forward to heading not too far from here, Savannah Kitchen, right in the mills, Southern Comfort Food. So awesome. let's go head there. My name's Chris Caddy. I'm the owner of Savannah Kitchen. Um, this is a Southern New Orleans Cajun and Creole concept. In Newmarket, New Hampshire, we've got a lot of cool food, a lot of uh, really cool craft cocktails. It's, uh, it's good, honest, really complex, good food. Uh, the reason I decided to do it up here was New England has nothing like this. And the whole idea is to get some really interesting, different food up in New England. Uh, between Southern New Orleans, Cajun and Creole, it covers a lot of bases. It's not necessarily spicy food. There's a lot of spices, but not heat. Uh, some of the food we're going to be making. Today we're going to be doing uh, the stuffed jalapenos, kind of like a take on jalapeno popper, served over our uh, chili verde. Really delicious stuff. Um, our oink, the fried pork belly, drizzled with a, a braising, braising liquid reduction. Uh, really, really delicious dish. Um, cr nice, crispy braised pork, pork belly. We're also going to be doing our shrimp and grits, which is kind of our star here. Definitely our biggest seller. Um, really great flavor. Um, we, we nailed down a really awesome spice blend here. Um, nice Cajun Creole spice blend. Um, kind of definitely our own. Um, it kind of is what helps make the food pot here big time. The tiki corner on the specialty cocktails is just kind of a fun, slightly cheesy, just cheesy enough to be fun. Tiki is, you know, it's all rum. Different kinds of rum. We've got a Mai Tai, we've got a Savannah Zombie, and we've got a beach hammock. Real tiki mugs, real bamboo straws, and, uh, and paper umbrellas, just for a, that little bit of cheese and to make you feel like you're on an island somewhere. I, honestly, here at Savannah Kitchen, we have a lot to offer for anybody. Um, whether you're looking for a Caesar salad, or a cheeseburger, or some shrimp and grits, or fried catfish, um, we can do just about anything for anybody. Um, well, one thing that definitely sets us apart is no matter what it is, whether it's a Caesar salad or a $26 special, everything's going to be done with complete care and perfection. Come on down to downtown Newmarket, right in the mill building, check out Savannah Kitchen. 
Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Blueberry peach bread pudding for the Marangot ice cream made right downstairs. Wow. Um, it's a lemon cinnamon ice cream. And this is our uh, chocolate peanut butter mousse parfait. Really delicious. Hey, thanks, man. Thank you so Good. much. I mean, unbelievable. And no visit to New Market is complete without a trip to the Stone Church. So let's head up there. And now a segment of How I Live Free from our presenting sponsor, Visit New Hampshire. Winter surfing's almost like a different sport than traditional surfing. It's a unique experience to paddle out in the midst of a snowstorm, you know, ice hanging off your beard and, and you're looking back at snow drifts and wind blowing like crazy. It's, it's an epic feeling for sure. I mean, it's a little stupid, but it's also awesome. <laughs> My name's Tyler McGill and I run Summer Session Surf Shop in Rye, New Hampshire. Making surfing your living is like the dream. We've gotten blessed in the fact that we were able to make something that we thought was just a fun summer job and obviously our passion, that it's something that now it's our livelihood. What we think about is you know, the differentiator is the experience when you come into the shop. You know, that's something that people can't replicate. That's something that you can't get online, is getting to come in and people remembering your order and being like, oh, hey, what's up, Tom? What's up, Sarah? So I think our main goal is to have an experience when you come into the shop, you know, something that sticks with you for the whole season. We've got 20 coaches that work with us and staff that come back year in, year out. I think we have our own little community within the Seacoast area that's pretty unique. I've spent a lot of time exploring outside of New Hampshire. Africa, Europe, Central South America, and you know, I lived out in Cali. Something about New Hampshire always just felt a little bit more like home. I guess for me, like living free is waking up every day and kind of feeling like the world's my oyster. Like I can get up and go surf, or I can hop in my car and go shred some snow with my buddies. For me, freedom is feeling like I wake up every day in New Hampshire and I'm gonna get to do what I wanna do today. You know, I have the freedom to work in front of the ocean every day doing what I love. That to me is free. So we've spent all day in Newmarket and absolutely love it. We came right up the street from Main Street to the Stone Church, which is a staple here. It's a fantastic music venue. We're gonna get drinks here while the band sets up and I'm here with my friend Erin. We love the town, but tell us why everyone else is loving this town. Um, so Newmarket is one of the best kind of hidden secrets on the seacoast. It's got a great downtown area. You've got um, waterfront, riverfront area, lots of shops, restaurants. There's a lot of trail systems here. It's a great place for families. And then you've got great spots for entertainment in the area as well. So Newmarket is becoming incredibly popular for a spot to people for people to relocate to because you have Portsmouth, everybody knows about Portsmouth, but the prices there unfortunately have been sky high lately, going up to 700,000 as an average price point. So wanting that same downtown feel, you had people starting to migrate to Dover, which is another big downtown area. And again, prices there have been skyrocketing. Now the average price point there is around 450,000. So in Newmarket, we're on 400,000. You've got this great downtown area. You've got, you know, the entertainment. You've got bars, restaurants, shopping, um, a lot, a lot of outdoors activities, which people love. Great for families, but it's at an affordable rate while still having the downtown, being close to Portsmouth, being close to, you know, the ocean. So it's really yeah. an awesome area. Yeah. Lastly, we spent some time today with Eric Chinberg in the newly renovated mills. I mean, that's had to have some kind of impact on why this area is booming. Yeah, 100%. It's brought a lot of growth into the area because it's beautiful now. I mean, you had these mill buildings that were a little bit in disrepair and the revitalization of downtown has happened, I think, a lot in tribute to the mill buildings and what he's done, so. Yeah, he's yeah. done a great job. All right, well, let's head inside, meet the owner of Stone Church and listen to some music. Sounds great. Hello everybody, welcome to the Stone Church. My name is Mike Hoffman. My wife Cheryl and I own this uh, fine establishment. We've uh, had it for about four years. The Stone Church has been here since 1970s. Um, everybody from Bonnie Raitt, Fish played here um, six times. Buddy Guy, uh, the list goes on and on. Um, so everybody starts off in a small little music venue like this. Even Bruce Springsteen started a little pizza shop, you know, and, and we're home to 
those stocks. My wife and I are, are proud to be the custodians here and building on the history here and preserving a, a local legend landmark. We recently had this building registered on the uh, National Registry of Historic Places and, and it is very important. Music is important to all of us. It's important to the performers and, I, and when I say that I mean live music. The, some of our people get depressed if they don't see live music, if they don't play out and it's, it's therapy to a lot of us. So, it's critical and I just, I enjoy looking over a crowd and seeing everybody having such a great time and it, it brings a lot of joy to me. It's like throwing a party five, six nights a week but you've got staff to clean up. You don't have to do the dishes. Uh, so it, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's been the heartbeat of the town and of the seacoast for over 50 years now uh, and a lot of people watch carefully, see what we, we're coming, what's coming next, such as a Ghost of Paul Revere. I'm George Barber, I'm a singer-songwriter, um, and I'm here Wednesdays with the Dead Archer label. It's a record label I started with some friends, and we book Wednesday nights here. I grew up in spaces like this, so it feels very homey for me to come uh, and be a part of this community. And uh, what I really love is that, you know, the, the folks here are focused on the music. It's a primary thing. A lot of places you play, you know, bars that happen to have music, and this is a music venue that happens to have a great bar, so it, it all sort of works out uh, for the artists and for the community as well, which I really am appreciative of. New Hampshire sometimes gets overlooked, um, or has for a long time, in terms of like the arts community, uh, but there's a lot of incredible players here, there's a lot of, you know, interesting folks making interesting things, and I think that uh, bit by bit we're starting to see the state kind of define itself artistically in a way that's really exciting, so it's been good to be a part of that. So New Hampshire is an unbelievable place to live and the seacoast is at the heart of it. We're an hour from Boston, an hour from Portland, an hour from the mountains, lakes. The ocean is right here. We can see the salt water, the tidal. We can take a canoe to Liverpool if we wanted to from the docks downtown. It's, this is the place to be. It's, it's so enjoyable. The people are unbelievable. I've lived all over the country. I used to open up restaurants all over the country. And this is where I wanted to raise my kids. I didn't want them in a place that we had to deal with some of the elements that you'd find in other locations. The people know each other here. You may not know everybody's name, but you know their face, you wave. There's, there's a mom on every street corner watching out over the whole town. So come on down to Newmarket, enjoy the town. It's the place to be, it's a lot of fun. And at the center of it um, is the Stone Church. Relax, enjoy some good company. Uh, this, don't tell me this town ain't got no heart. Thanks so much for watching this episode of New Hampshire Life. To follow along on our adventures, find us on social media or newhampshirelife.com. And thank you to our presenting sponsor, Visit New Hampshire. And thanks to all the guests that made this show possible. See you next time. Got a girlfriend, she's a nurse down in the city. Working hard right on the front line. Right, kind of like, <laughs> like this is New Hampshire life. <laughs> okay. 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 Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Josh thinks I'm doing well. <laughs> okay.